Hello and welcome to this episode of my knitting podcast. My name on Instagram is Orchis Heart and I'm based in Birmingham in England. Uh, today this episode is going to be a bit different. I'm going to attempt to do an everything I knit in 2022. So thank you and welcome for joining. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to do this or not because I've watched a couple and I didn't know whether people were bored of them or not. But I posted on Instagram and asked if people would be interested and um, I got quite a positive yes. So I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I don't take notes when I make things, not really. When I started learning, um, I did. And um, I don't anymore, which is really naughty because sometimes that does cause me problems. Uh, and so, and I'm also not like good at posting everything on Instagram, it turns out. There are a couple of things, I think, maybe from the year previous, and less so than this year, that I didn't actually post proper photos up on Instagram. So it was quite hard to tell with some of them when I actually knit them. So there is a bit of guesswork. Uh, so please don't call me out if I've made a mistake. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, especially if you're watching older videos and then you jump to watching this and you're like, hang on, that video was actually from the end of 2021. Um, you know, let me get away with it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, is it? I'm not going to do a 2021 episode, so I don't think it makes any difference. Um, the other thing is, what was I going to say? Because this is likely to be quite a long video, there will be no like extra B-roll or anything in here. I've mentioned before, but my tech setup is not advanced. I'm just using my phone and my laptop's pretty rubbish. Uh, so the longer videos get, the less I can mess with them before it becomes a complete nightmare to upload it slash impossible. Uh, so if, depending on how long this video is, if it's not too long, I will put the names of the patterns at the bottom of the screen, but if it's over an hour, I will have to directly just upload it straight to YouTube, in which case I'll just link all the patterns in the description box below. Um, yeah, because I can't edit it if it's over an hour. Not really, I have to upload it straight away, or well, straight to YouTube, because my laptop won't be able to handle rendering an edited video over an hour. Um, 55 minutes seems to be its cut-off point before it gets to too uh difficult so i'm guessing by the number of things i'm going to show you that that might end up being the case so yes the other thing i want to say is before i sat down to make a list of everything i knit last year i didn't think i'd knit that much i'm looking at my pile now and i can't decide whether this is excessive or not the list was a bit overwhelming but looking at it now spread out on my bed Maybe less so, but that might be because a couple of things got given away. Which I'll only be able to share photos with you if I'm able to do some editing. If not, I'm sorry. Um, there's only a couple of things. But yeah, so let's get started, shall we? I am not going to do it in order because that's just a challenge I can't be bothered facing. I'm going to do it in order of type of knit. Maybe that's more interesting. I don't know. So I'm looking, trying to decide whether to start with accessories and small knits or bigger ones. I think I've got it all laid out in my window bed in front of me. But you can see my arm in the mirror. In front here, um, I've got my, my window seat. So I'm sat in front of quite a big window. So the light might change quite a lot. It was sunny when I started this, but it's gone a bit grey now. So but hopefully, because I'm quite close to the window, you'll be able to see quite well what I'm showing you. Okay, well, let's start with hats. So, I will have to get up and down in between because they're all in front behind the camera, uh, but it means I can actually see what I'm going to be talking about rather than things being on the floor. So, right, let's start with hats. So at the end of 2021, I do remember in the lead up to Christmas, I, for Christmas presents, knit quite a few broom hats. So the broom hat is a pattern by Melody Hoffman, B Mandarines, and I think it's a Neuterden with mohair pattern. So I initially made one in um, a green Plutolope uh, for myself with mohair, but it turned out way too big. Um, and so after that, I started knitting the, like, the large child size as gifts for family. So in the new year, I believe it was in the new year, not the end of 2021, I decided to knit myself a red one. So this is the broom hat and I knit this in Brooklyn Tweed 
loved whichever one's the fingering weight one and I used two strands uh, and I held it with a strand of mohair um, Rowan Kidsock Hayes which lovely Harriet from Harriet Wildwood Stitches um, gave to me as a gift because it was left over uh, and yeah and so when I started knitting this I don't remember now whether this was a conscious decision because I wasn't sure how much yarn I had I think I started knitting it from here potentially from a provisional cast arm but I'm not sure I was that clever back then um, and I knit um, this point up so I think this is on the smaller millimeter needle size because you do no the larger because you do the first brim on smaller and then you go up a needle size um, and then I picked up and knit downwards the brim and I think this is because I was worried about length I can't remember and I knew that the dodgy bit I don't think there was going I didn't know there was going to be a dodgy bit where you joined and knit the other way I thought it all match up but it didn't um, but the dodgy bit is hidden by the fact that it's folded up so I wear this a lot I think it's held up really well it did stretch out a bit to start with but I think that's the nature of a rib hat pattern um, but because it was quite firm to start with it does fit really well so I wear this all the time I love the textured red colour it's a really nice bright red without it being too in your face I would say this is an accurate colour probably so yeah that was my one of my early projects recently however I knit another one so I was still really sad about the green Plutolope hat not fitting me um, so I knit the first one in two strands of Plutolope I think in the colour forest-ish or is it like a forest green or something like that it's the one that's got blue flecks in it and if I can remember the number I will put it in below um, and a strand of Lambia Labianime uh, mohair and so my partner's ended up with this hat so he's ended up with like the fancy hat with the fancy mohair mine has drops mohair in it and I, I must admit it did impact the colour his definitely has a bit more of a sheen and a softness to it so I am a little bit jealous I do have some of that mohair left but I was going to save it for doing like a like a tank or a waistcoat or something because there should still be enough um but I haven't knit that yet so we'll see maybe I should have used it on this because it is a hat I do wear however this one came out a bit short when I fold it up it is just a bit too short to cover my ears like I would have liked it to have been fold up a bit further so I end up not folding up very much which is a bit silly or wearing it like like this but I don't really like wearing hats like that so I am a little bit like this still isn't perfect this one's too too short and the other one is too um, big so I don't know in all honesty I'd say it's unlikely that I'm going to unravel it and re-knit it because it's knit bottom up and with the length this is at if I picked up here and carried on knitting I think you would see the join on the front because it'd be too far down yeah I don't know unless it needs to be some kind of triple rolled brim I don't know if anyone has any thoughts about that please do share because this colour is a really good colour for me it would go really well with my wardrobe but I don't wear it that much because of the length so that's a shame so that's two brim hats the other hat I knit this year um, is this one and so this is the and I knit this quite early last year in January I think it was this was a test knit I did um, for Olia. Oh, I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. It's an Irish word. Um, I'll put her name below. I think her name is Heather Nolan, um, but her designer name, I'm not sure it's in Irish. And this is, and I might say this wrong, I'm sorry, the Ferocious hat. And I knit this in, and I've picked up the ball band for this one. Uh, Sheared Treasures pure new Shetland wool and it was in two undyed colours and the interesting thing about this yarn is is it the sheep are not raised for slaughter um so but I think it's quite a small um company yarn I bought it in a wool shop in Wales when we were traveling and I think I knit the second size like the medium size for this hat 
I really like it, but I'm going to be honest, it's too small. Um, it's just a bit too tight. It's very fitted. I would have liked a little bit more height. Probably, it's got like a double folded brim, probably a deeper brim. Um, I think the original one was in Let Low P, and I did, mine was like a sport weight or something, so I knit it with the yarn held double. I do wear it because I wear it under my helmet when I'm cycling because it's really like close to my head and really fits and because it's quite tight it actually doesn't shift. So I did stretch this out as much as I could um, and maybe it is a bit looser now because I have been wearing it a lot cycling. Um, so it does do a really good job for what I wear it for but I didn't really knit a nice colourwork hat in small farm um, yarn tied under my helmet so I mean that's kind of a shame I don't tend to wear it any other time um but then you know maybe it's nice to have nice knits for all occasions so yeah I think if you were to knit this I would definitely knit the brim longer I'm sorry the kids next door are having some fun I would definitely knit the brim longer uh it's quite mine's at quite a dense gauge because of the way I held the yarn I think I would also maybe knit the larger size but otherwise it is really pretty um, and I think the pattern was quite well written from what I remember so yes Feroz's hat I'm not gonna chuck all these things back on the floor because I think that's messy I'll try and put them back on the bed at uh, the window seat so what should we go to next I will talk about the things I'm wearing when I get to the appropriate category I'm sorry if that's annoying for people uh, I will do my only pair of mittens next so because this seems appropriate so recently um, she brought out the same designer as you can tell from the pattern a matching mitten set so this is the ferocious mitten she did call for testers I was really tempted to um, put myself forward for that but um, not only did I have not quite enough yarn for it I think I was quite busy and she was only going to give like 10 days for testing one mitten which is totally possible because it only took me two days to knit one but I think it was quite a busy time like we were going away or it was like a week before Christmas or something like that so I knit mine out of leftover yarn um leftover let low pee now you won't be able to tell in this light um probably not anyway mm. Can you tell? They're made from two different colours of dark let low P. So I think this one's brown black and this is black and they're both heather but the um, light beige colour is the same. And so you need about a ball per mitten of the dark colour and then maybe one total of the um, beige but you have a bit left over. I pretty much knit mine to pattern. I think I might have knit the hand and the thumb a bit longer. I've got quite long fingers. So I did try it on and check it as I went. I also knit mine predominantly on um, like small circulars. But I really like these. I wasn't sure whether I'd be a mitten person or not because I have convertible mittens, um, but not like permanently closed ones. And my convertible mittens, I'm quite often like taking the flap off to use my phone and do things. So I, I didn't think that I would really enjoy wearing these. I thought I'd find them quite restrictive. But let me tell you, it is warmer <laughs> wearing a mitten with all your fingers together like this, I think. Or maybe it's the let low pee uh, than gloves or anything like that. Like I find these so toasty warm. And it's kind of like having your hand in a pocket, but they're not in a pocket. So I, I really enjoyed these and I've only knit these recently, um, right right before this, um, Christmas. So it was right at the end of last year. Uh, and I wish I'd knit something like this sooner because I've worn them loads. Yeah, so, and I don't mind that they're slightly two different colors. It actually made me feel really good that I used, I knit them totally from stash, from leftovers. And um, you can't, like, I can tell, but I don't think anybody else really notices. The colour is so slightly different. One's just a bit warmer and one's a bit cooler in tone. Maybe another knitter would notice. I don't know. But, um, yeah. 
so close. This was because when I was knitting my fern and feather um, the year before, I didn't know whether I wanted black brown or black. I didn't know whether black heather would be too stark against the beige and whether I wanted a slightly more subtle colour. So because it only needed like one skein of um, contrast for the colour work, I think I just bought one of each because it was really cheap, figuring I would use the other one for something at some point. And then I ended up buying more of one of them um, for using colour work in um, a few other projects. So I still had a skein left of it at the end. So yes, that was my mitten project. I'm going to have some more tea. Um, I will do cows next. I think it's only the one that I'm wearing. So uh, this is the Velvet Mirror Cow by Andrea Mowry. Get it off so you can see it properly. So this is an all over colour work pattern. I don't think I've done anything in all over colour work before. And it's knit in, uh, let me get this right, the greyish colour is by uh, Ampersand Fibres and it's the Colston Fingering in the colourway Oat. And I was gifted this yarn, I won it in a giveaway. Uh, so that's that one. And then the yellow is, so in the pattern I think she uses um, sport weight yarns. And so the uh, Colston Fingering, maybe it's not called Colston Fingering, that was a sport weight yarn. So that's why I used it. And then uh, my yellow, <laughs> sorry I can really hear the kids going for it, I'm sorry. Um, the yellow is a strand of Surrey Alpaca Lace Weight by Zakami Fibres. I got on a bargain bin at a yarn festival and a lace weight held double um, of something I naturally dyed and I don't know what it was um, but I dyed it with like buddlia and um, some modifiers to make it really bright so the colour match was actually quite good. I think Andrea Maori uses a uh, spin cycle and something fluffy and so hers has a gradual like colour change in it now my thing, my Surrey Alpaca did have some colour change, but it got really diluted by my uh, other lace weight yarn, so it doesn't really show. So the colours are quite flat in this, which is something that I usually don't really like. Like I like tonal or, you know, the different colour shifts you get from um, naturally undyed yarns. But I, I love this. It's so soft and it's an infin infinity cowl or Mobius cowl. It's got like a twist in it. There we go. You can see it better now. And you do, I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to see if you can see. There's, you knit the chart with the colours held one way and then halfway through you flip what's the contrast and what's the main. And I'm trying to find the point where you flip see what I mean. What's this here? Can you see it changes? And then um, you kitch note, so you do a provisional cast on and then you knit the tube so there's like you can't see the wrong side at all and then you um, kitch note closed. So I, it was a bit of a, a labour of love um, but it, I think it's really pretty. I actually think this looks like one of my most expensive knits and I don't really know what I mean by that. Like I feel like it looks like something maybe that you could buy and I'm not saying that in a derogatory way because I think hand knits are really beautiful um, but maybe it's something that kind of blends in a bit more, I don't know. But I love it, I absolutely love it and it's so soft and really really cosy and I wear it a lot at home um, when like a, a shawl would get in the way. I have actually worn it with a shawl on top when it's been really cold as well. So, yes, I love this. This is the only cowl I knit this year. I did start one at the end of last year, but I only finished it a couple of days ago. So I'll share that in my next proper normal podcast. So, yes. So, lots of talking. I'm already tired. <laughs> and I haven't even got onto the jumpers yet. Um, so, next we'll do socks. So, apologies, obviously all of these socks 
have been worn and well used because that's why I knit socks. So where should we start? Uh, we can start with, sorry, my hair gets on everything. It's a bit gross. We'll start with these stripy ones. So these are knit in little grey girls um, self-striping cutaway that she did especially for Unravel last year. Um, so it's got these different colours. So you can't really see the whole sock. It's been on my feet so it's a bit, a bit twisted. Um, and it's got like a grey contrast heel turn cuff. Now most of my socks, regardless of the pattern, um, I'd kind of do the same construction. A bit of rib, straight, heel flap and gusset, decreases, um, and then either a barn toe or a wedge toe. This is a this looks like it's a wedge toe actually, with not very many stitches at the end. I don't really enjoy Kitchener, so I'll have started doing a barn toe at some points. Um, and these ones I knit whilst I was travelling in Mexico. I went to Mexico for almost two weeks um, in March last year. And so I knit these whilst I was travelling. And it was a really good project because of the self-striping. Um, kept it interesting. But I knit like the second one almost entirely when we were driving back from Veracruz back to my friend's place um, in Zacatecas. And then like the last bit on the flight on the way home. So almost one was the return journey. That's how long it took me to get home. It was a couple of days. <laughs> I'm not a fast knitter. So yes, but I like every time I wear these, I think about my friend and I think about that journey and that holiday and it's so lovely. So yes. So it's my first pair. My second pair um, are these ones. And so they haven't worn terribly well, to be honest. So this is a mashup between Harvest Moon by Pico Kumalainen, um, which is an all over colour work sock pattern. And then my standard sock recipe, except this one's got a barn toe. And I knit these in Lang Yarns, sock yarn, charcoal, which is what the main colour is. And that's the one that comes with a spool of reinforce reinforcement thread. So that is a super wash yarn with um, nylon in it. And then the contrast is uh, a sock yarn by Nervous Fibre in the colourway Ha. And it has like little tonal flecks of pinks and things like that. Now, the yarn, the Lang yarn, I've used it for other socks and they look really good still. So I think it's this colourway, but the way it's worn, like the paler part of the yarn seems to like come to the outside and wear off. I don't know, you know, like when you have old towels and they go a bit gray on the outside, it's kind of done that. And I have also noticed that my slippers on the back of the heel tend to wear things quite badly. So it is a shame, but I do wear these a lot in my boots and you only kind of see them from here up. So you don't actually see all this. So it might be excessive wearing socks and boots, but there are no holes. The heel is still really tough and thick because of the reinforcement thread. So to be honest, being that you can really only see from this point up, I'm not too bothered, but I don't think I would want to knit something with that colourway again, because it just looks a bit ratty, especially on the heel. And the other one's the same. Not quite as bad because I think I cut some of the rattiness off the other day, but it's kind of happening again. I worry about doing things like that, um, like cutting off like bits because I feel like I'm making it less hard wearing because there's less to like rub through before you make a hole. But then I was like, this looks really untidy, so I'm going to try and do something about it. So I did try to make it look a bit better. Yeah, so that's my second pair of socks. My third pair of socks. Um, are the calico socks by the calico socks by um, Morgan from Knitting Nelly, and I knit these in Exmoor um, sock by John Arben. Um, all of it except from this, and this is natural sock four ply by Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. It's got this really cute little um, flower pattern, 
and then I think hers has like a different heel but I did my standard um, heel flap and gusset and a this one does have a wedge toe and the colours I think were Hemel, Mizzle, Mackerel Sky and then the yellow is Drumble and this was a mini skein from a set I got. So, and I finished these ages and ages ago, but I only started wearing them recently because I hadn't taken any pictures, proper pictures of them on my feet yet. And so I've probably worn them a handful of times and they are wearing quite well. I think there might be an end peeking out there. Again, I've been wearing them in my boots and my slippers at home a lot. Um, this is, has got nylon in it, but it's also quite a rustic sock yarn, like it's quite a hairy one. And I have to be honest, they feel really lovely when you put them on your feet. Not like wearing a superwash sock yarn. So I can kind of see why people switch to no nylon. This does have nylon in it. The ones I'm going to show you in a minute don't. And they felt even more delicious. Um, so I would wear these out the house, but probably not so much these next ones. So that was the calico sock. So then my next pair are these really boring plain looking <laughs> basic socks and then they're in Garth Nor Socks Snowdonia and then a little bit of Drover by Daughter of a Shepherd which does have 10% nylon but it's still quite a rustic I think it's non-superwash but I'm certain it's non-superwash um, sock yarn and it's quite a new one actually and these feel I think these are actually my favourite socks I've ever knit and they're plain and it's because of the way they feel I am really funny about my feet when I sleep. I get really cold and really hot really easily. And so I do wear socks when I sleep. But I also like kick them off quite a lot because I get quite hot. I think it's the synthet syntheticness of socks that does that to me because I have to say I probably don't wear synthetic fibres anywhere else. These, because they're made of wool, are breathable and it just feels so much better. So I sleep in these a lot. I wear these in the house almost every day I have to be honest so I think they're wearing really well now I've not worn them out the house so however I have noticed it is starting to get a bit thin perhaps on the ball maybe not I thought I could see the light through um that's worrying me now no I think it's okay no, I think it's fine. I don't think I need to worry about it yet. Um, but I wear these tons. I don't think I would knit socks. I intend to wear out of the house out of Garth and all because I've heard really mixed things about... <coughs> <coughs> <I'm> sorry. <coughs> I'm doubly sorry because I probably won't be able to edit that out. <laughs> sorry. I probably wouldn't knit socks that I was going to wear out the house in this yarn. I did kind of buy it with the intention of making socks to wear when I'm working from home. Because I do work from home quite a lot. And this house is flipping freezing. So yes. So they are shorter than I would like. But that's because I only had one 50 gram skein. Uh, if I had two then I could have knit like a bit longer. But from working from home, it's fine. I tend to wear leggings at home anyway, so I just tuck those in. But yeah, I really like these. It has made me think that maybe I would like some more plain socks with a longer leg to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I really enjoyed knitting these and I actually didn't get bored, but I think that's because of the way it felt. I think if I was to knit such a plain sock in like a super wash yarn, Maybe I wouldn't enjoy it as much. Maybe if it was the Exmoor sock, it'd be like a nice compromise. I don't know, but that's just some sock thoughts. So I didn't knit as many socks as I did in the previous year. In the previous year, I think I did one pair a month, but I'd only just learned, so I was obsessed. So that means I've done one, two, three, four, and then I knit two pairs as gifts. One was like a thick, chunky sock. It was the um, Snowshoe Sock by Emily Foden. Uh, and then I knit a couple of half pairs I've not, I've not finished. So maybe six, seven pairs. It's not too bad going. I'm about to finish 
a pair that I started at the end of the year but because I'm still knitting the second sock I will share that in my next podcast proper podcast um yeah so the last two small knits inspired by um cat uh, cat weaver heather and hops really wanted to knit um some ripple bralettes so i knit in the end one i would like to knit more of these but one um and this is in life in the long grass their sock base Again, this has come out too short. I would have liked this to be longer. This definitely is a bralette. I wanted it to be a tank top. It's just when you stretch it out to the right width, it's just too short for me to feel like I can really wear it as a tank. It's knit from the bottom up. I do wonder if I could just cut off this really small one by one rib and pick up and knit a longer one by one rib maybe uh, but yeah I don't know and this being a super wash yarn does make it really easy for it to wear against like quite sensitive places I don't think I'd be able to wear rustic yarn on my bare chest um, but because this is a super wash nylon merino um, there's no problem there at all so the problem I have with this to be able to when it's hot enough to wear it on its own because of the length it's too hot to wear something made from wool so I do sometimes wear it underneath my clothes um, but that isn't really what I wanted it for I wanted to be able to wear it as a tank top with a cardigan or something like that my dungarees it's kind of possible because the dungarees on the side give you a bit more coverage but yeah so maybe this yarn it another one maybe I'll try and make this one longer I've still got some of the yarn um, but that is something that I would like to have um, at some point. <laughs> the other summer top I made, also not really something that ended up being that useful because it came out too short, um, was this wrap top, which is impossible to show you, really. But it like wraps around the front and then ties. Um, but mine's really short and really booby. Uh, I mean, maybe when it's really, really hot, it's kind of okay. But again, you've got the problem with it being wool. Um, but this was just a bargain yarn from like a bargain bin, also Zakame. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but it could do with being a bit longer. But maybe I can wear it over something else or under something else or something like that. By the time I finished it, it was quite late in the summer last year, so I didn't really get any wear out of it. I think maybe I wore it around the house a bit when it was really warm. Because it's quite cool in here when it's really hot outside. So it was kind of like a good medium point. But yeah, so that's the smaller things I've knit. Uh, next we'll talk about shawls and then I'll get on to my jumpers and cardigans. So the first shawl I knit, and this is one where I'm not sure whether it was last year or the year before, is this Birds of a Feather by Andrea Mowry. And it has this gorgeous lace where it went a bit wrong on. So maybe I'll show you another bit <laughs> where I don't think I went wrong. And I knit mine in two really special yarns. Um, is that going to focus? The bluey one is by Viola Yarns. And it is her Superwash Merino. And I think it's in the lettuce colourway or something like that. But it has all these like gorgeous flecks of like darker blue and and yellow and it feels delicious um i don't know why it feels nicer than other superwash merinos to be honest but it does i just really like the different changes of color her colors are gorgeous and then this yellow is naturally dyed silk alpaca linen blend um by woolen flower in scotland and it just this feels so soft this i feel like is a bit of a fancier knit um i really like 
the shape of it is like an unusual long triangular shape um, and I, I do wear it quite a lot and it is really soft in kind of a comforting way um, and I did struggle to wear it until I knit one of my jumpers which I'll show you in a minute because I wear a lot of grungier kind of colours or like stripes and stuff and I just really never felt that it ever went with anything um, but I really enjoyed knitting it and I think it's really beautiful and sometimes it's nice to have something a bit different in your wardrobe but now I've knit a particular jumper which you'll see in a minute um, I do actually wear it a lot more often and I quite like wearing it when I go out in the evening for like a drink or something like that um, because it's a scarf but maybe it's a bit of a, a nicer scarf so yeah I really like this it's so soft and the naturally dyed colour has actually held up really well I'm pretty sure it's still the same colour as it was when I got it, which is not the same for some of my other naturally dyed purchases. But yes, that's The Birds of a Feather by Andrea Maori. Hers is actually knit using a mohair and a lace weight. So mine's a bit different because I used a fingering and a lace weight. So I think mine might be a bit chunkier, but it also meant that I had to mess a little bit with where what section I used for what colour because I didn't have enough of the viola um, to do what I needed to do I think. So this one I definitely did knit last year and it's the same pattern so I'm going to show you this one next but it's going to be harder to see because it's all in quite a dark brown yarn but it's the same as the other one it has that lace which maybe you can see yeah this i wear absolutely tons this is daughter of a shepherd heritage broom yarn and i love it so i was given a gift card for my birthday and so they had a bit of a sale when they launched their new website so i bought two skeins of this because it's quite an expensive yarn um it's like 30 pounds a skein but I had a gift card and a discount so it wasn't so bad um, but I did my maths wrong and I actually needed three skeins so it did end up costing me some money to make this but I still have half a skein of this left and I was annoyed at the time um, <laughs> but that I had to buy a third skein but you know that was the only skein I bought myself and actually I wear this all the time I know it just kind of looks like a massive brown knitting but it's a really nice shape. There is some lace on it. The texture is actually really lovely, but you can't see it. But the yarn itself is beautiful and it's actually really warm. So it's a four ply, so it is thicker um, and denser than the original pattern. But you know, it's still got a lovely drape and it's a heathered yarn. Oh, you can kind of see the color there, look. And it goes with a lot of my clothes and I do quite often wear it over other things and it's just so so cozy um and when I'm traveling it's quite nice to like you know cuddle up to it and stuff like that so yes so that was my second birds of a feather so that was the second shawl I knit previous to this in the year before I only knit one shawl and I wore it all the time I stopped wearing scarves because I wear my shawls like scarves and so I that's why I decided I needed more shawls in my life I've definitely got quite a few more um, planned, but I only knit one more last year. And that is the Vertices Unite by Stephen West. And you knit it in sections and you pick up stitches and you add to it as you go. So there's no seaming. I've got it the wrong way round. <laughs> um, and it's like this lovely play of stripes and solid sections with a I-cord edge. It's the longest I-cord I've ever done. I hadn't done an I-cord until I did this. The I-cord edge was a bit tedious, um, but it's a really nice finish. And I really like this because I do have a bit of a problem with triangular shawls or crescent shaped shawls. I don't like traditional triangle shaped shawls. I like crescent shaped. And quite often like 
the cast on edge is too tight whereas because you only cast on two stitches or something like that and you increase and work out from there and then you end up maybe along this edge I'm not sure I can't remember maybe it was along here um oh, I think it was from what I can feel like along here or something um there isn't none of that tightness you know Stephen West I can't say I always like his patterns they're a bit out there for me but he is really good with construction as you can see I did make a mistake with the stripe there um but this is sorry I think that was a car outside um this is a collection of my naturally dyed yarns mostly woolly mammoth fiber co a lot of it is natural sock but this yellow here, I think you can see that there's two, two tones. This is Welsh Mule and this is Natural Sock. I kind of ran out. Um, so you can see there's two separate colours. Now, some of the colours have faded a bit, but luckily there's still plenty of contrast and it's still looking okay. I try and store this in a dark place when I'm not wearing it because it is all natural dyes. And it would be a shame if it faded too much. It has a bit already. Um, I have kind of decided in the last few months, and other than my na own natural dye experiments, I'm probably not going to buy any more naturally dyed yarn because it does just fade. I've got some, well, actually this. these. This is an indigo dyed natural yarn. Um, and I have to say, it is a particular few dyes I've bought from that I've really noticed it, and they're quite expensive. Um, and like, if the indigo is fading, indigo is quite like that's a dye that's been used for centuries, and it should stick. But these have definitely faded, um, and it's not. I've not worn it that much. It's not been out in the sun that much, so I don't really understand that. So I will continue dyeing with natural dyes for my own fun for on thrifted yarns and think carefully about how I use them maybe not doing colour work so that if ever needs re-dyeing that's an option because then you can re-dye the whole garment but things like this you wouldn't be able to do that because you would lose um all of that beauty so yeah um I'd like to knit another one of these maybe in undyed neutrals I think that'd be really lovely it's quite a good way of using up mini skeins and scraps as well so that might be something I make this year. Cardigans. Uh, let's start with this one because I'm wearing it. So this is actually meant to be a sweater pattern. It's called Beetle Magic by Katie Greenbeam. It's got colour work here and then it has beetles on the yoke. Um, but I modified mine as you can see. So the yarn um, is Natural Sock 4-ply from my advent calendar from Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. Um, there was a mistake in my advent and I ended up with two of the same, um, which I wasn't mad about because it was actually one of my favourite colours in there. But as mentioned, it has faded quite a bit. It was much darker than that. Um, and this is a cone that I thrifted and dyed with henna. Now, I didn't particularly enjoy knitting this, and it's nothing to do with the pattern or actually to do with the yarn. It is because I decided to mess with gauge, and I think this was a woolly knit cone, so it's like a light fingering, and when I swatched with one strand, it looked terrible. So I decided to do two strands, um, and on the recommended needles, I, which I used up here, it was so dense it was hurting my hands. So when I went up a size for the colour work, I stuck with that through the rest of it. And to be honest, the yarn, and I don't know whether it's because of what I've dyed it with, didn't feel very nice to knit with at that gauge. And to be honest, I think it wasn't a very nice yarn. It might not have been willing knit. Um, it was like the Tweedy one if it was. I'm just guessing that it was because it looked quite similar to the way they package up their yarns but it might not be so please don't take that as an authority um but definitely it kind of changed when i dyed it it went a bit crispy um which i didn't really enjoy so i steaked it i did it with steak stitches i kind of worked out where the middle would have been and added in some extra stitches for the steak 
um, cut it up, did a button band, sewed some tape onto the back and have these lovely wooden buttons with bugs on, which I don't think it's going to focus. And I didn't wear it at all for ages. It took me a really long time to knit. I definitely started it in 2021. And then at some point last year, I decided I really need to finish it because it's just lying around and it's annoying me. So I forced myself to finish. It is a bit, it is short. And for some reason, it's longer at the front, longer in the middle of the back. In fact, maybe I can show you. I don't know if I'm matching that very well or not. And I think maybe that's because I've picked up too many stitches and the button band drags it down. But I'm not mad about the silhouette. I think it actually turned out quite a good length and shape with high-waisted stuff because it kind of comes along the curve of my hip. So, pure fluke. So, I did hate it when I first finished it. I was really annoyed by it. I didn't enjoy the process of knitting it. Um, and you know that feeling when you're like, that isn't how I thought it was going to look. I put it in the cupboard and forgot about it. But my mum recently gave me this stripy top um, and I recently made these trousers which I'll talk about in my next normal video podcast and the combination of these items, this shawl, this top, this cardigan and these trousers actually makes me really happy. So I think now that I've got something I really enjoy wearing it with um, and you know I'll find other things I enjoy wearing it with, I will wear it a lot more. It is quite dense, so I think it'll be quite hard wearing. So, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to wearing it more. I'm trying to speed up a bit because I'm aware I've been talking for 46 minutes and I'm only just doing cardigans. So I'm really sorry. This is definitely going to be uploaded straight to YouTube. So all the notes and names will be in the description box below, not on the screen. So another cardigan I knit last year. So maybe it doesn't matter how slowly or fast I talk if I'm doing it straight to YouTube. Well, who wants to listen to me talk for two hours? That'd be boring. Sorry, that noise is me pushing my chair back. This is the, it's quite long, <laughs> minimalist cable cardigan. The pattern is by Karina Spencer. And the yarn is um, Law by the the fibre company, the natural fibre company, the fibre company. Yes, I'll put it below. This yarn is gorgeous. It feels delicious. It was fantastic to knit with. Um, it's a DK weight yarn and mine's in the colour Ambitious. And I was gifted this yarn for a knit along that we did with them for the Minimalist Cable Cardigan. Myself and um, Harriet from Harriet Wildwood stitches. We both knitted together along with a few of you and I, I love it. It's You knit it in pieces and seam it together. The seaming was a bit tedious um, but actually knitting the panels I really enjoyed. I didn't think I would because I hate purling um, but it was actually quite quick and you get quite a satisfaction from knitting like a segment and it being done and then you knit the sleeves in the round inside out because it's kind of got this reverse stockinette on the outside and then just some simple cabling on the front and then the back is plain as well and quite a deep ribbing which you can fold up so I do wear this a lot it's really cozy I've got these like little coconut buttons on it yeah I do recommend this pattern it was really good and the yarns held up really well as well so yes, and I have a little bit left, half a skein, so I would like to knit something else lovely with that. That's something I'm thinking about putting in that um, other Vertices Unite I mentioned, in like earthy colours or undyed colours. That could be quite a good um, contrast maybe. So yeah, I'm just stroking it because it feels so squishy and warm. The other, another cardigan I knit. And I was really proud of this one. I still am. Is the so I'm just doing up some buttons. The Maya cardigan. Can't remember the name of the designer, to be honest. And I knit this in 
The red is left over from my hat, so Brooklyn Tweed something. The green is also left over um, Plutolope from the Plutolope hats. And then these were left over from my fern and feather. I think I did buy a bit more, and so it's let low predominantly. As you can see on the sleeve there, the colour pattern goes a bit awry on this like the beginning of round. That's because it's a free pattern and does not include any instructions for increases. So you have to bodge it. So I'm afraid it is a bit bodged. But you know, on the front it looks fine. I think I've knit mine a bit bigger. Um, that was intentional because I wear it over jumpers. There have been occasions where I've worn three layers of let lope in this house when working from home. My fern and feather, my tulip pullover, which I'll show you in a minute, and then this. So I really like this because I can wear it over things. And I don't think it looks too big on me. I am actually going to put it on because I'm really cold. But it was my first steaked garment. I was really worried about it. But actually, it went really well. And it's so cosy and warm. So I do wear it a lot. And I copied the colour scheme from another project I saw on Ravelry. So this combination was not my idea. And I wanted to pick something earthy that what didn't look Christmassy because my other chunky cardigan looks really Christmassy. But most people will say this does look Christmassy. I disagree. I think it's because there's a bit of red and a bit of green. To me, it just looks quite earthy. But, you know, there we go. Really pleased with this. Very cosy and warm. And I'm probably going to knit another one this year because my mother-in-law has requested one. So that's exciting quite a fast knit because it's all iron white yarn you do it bottom up so you do the sleeves so you have this bit of colour work a bit of plain colour work bit of plain colour work bit of plain join it all together colour work yoke so it's a very fun knit my last cardigan is bit of a funny one. So I'd done two steeped garments by this point so I guess I was feeling quite confident about it. So one of the first things I ever knit was a Felix pullover in Rowan pure wool, probably superwash and I didn't know what I was doing. It took me ages and all the stitches were twisted and it looked terrible. Once I worked out why it looked terrible, I stopped wearing it because it really annoyed me. The whole thing was twisted. Basically, I was knitting in the wrong place um, and it looked just like the way the stitches. I think my gauge was off. It was too gappy. It was too holy. It just looked wrong. It looked a bit trashy, to be honest. From far away or in an Instagram photo, it looked fine. But in real life, it looks a bit grim. So it just been sat in my cupboard and I was like... <sighs> And then some point last year, I randomly decided, I think it was late summer or early autumn, I was going to unravel it and re-knit it because it seemed a waste. It was a really nice colour. And I decided what I was going to do was I was going to knit the next size up because I had some leftover yarn. And I was going to add a mohair to make it a bit like thicker so the gauge would be better. Because I think when I knit it, I didn't understand gauge. This is an Aran White pattern and my yarn was DK. Um, so I added in a mohair and I decided I would steak it and make it a cardigan instead because it was super wash wool and with the mohair I knew I'd be able to wear it against my bare skin and I thought if it was slightly bigger then it might be a cosy thing to like throw on so there we go because it's super wash I think it has dropped a bit and grown I also knit the sleeves quite straight. I don't normally do that, but I did with this one. I have a short bit of rib at the end because I hate doing ribbing. And then these thrifted, well, these are actually from my grandmother's button tin. And I think I am one short. There should be one at the bottom, but I didn't have enough, so I just left it. And then I sewed this ribbon on the inside of the stick. Um, I wear this tons because it doesn't aggravate my skin at all. I really like rustic yarns, 
but like sometimes at work um I don't cover myself up on my arms and stuff quite so much because my office is really warm so things like this are really good it's also quite a good layering piece I do wear it over thin jumpers sometimes as well um but yeah I wear it absolutely tons it's definitely stretched out a bit um I guess that's because it's super wash but it's still fine and because it's knit on six millimeter needles I knit Nearly, I knit the whole thing in 10 days. I did it in a bit of a knitting fury. And then it did take me a little bit of time to sort the stick out. But I just knit it so quickly. So I do recommend the pattern. There is a Felix cardigan pattern, but you knit it flat. Whereas this, I knit, did, used the Felix jumper and did the same thing I did for my Beetle Magic. Worked out where the centre was and added in some stitches for the stick. I don't like purling. I like knitting in the round, so that made it nice and easy. Um, but if you don't want to work out where to put the steak or doing a steak stresses you out, you can definitely use the Felix cardigan pattern. I also didn't want to buy another pattern when I already had the Felix pullover. So that was me being stingy. Um, if you want someone to work it out for you, I recommend the Felix cardigan pattern. The end is nigh. <laughs> I've just got maybe three more things to share. Yes. So I did knit a jumper for my mother out of Let Low P. Skog Skoggle. And I can't share a picture with you because this video is too long. Um, so I did knit that one jumper. That was um, a colour work Let Low P jumper. <laughs> So that was something I knit through most of last year. But at the beginning of last year, I also knit the Magnolia Bloom. This is knit out of Debbie Bliss Cash Merino and a strand of Midnatal Sol, don't know how you say that, by Camera Rose, which is like a mohair alternative lace weight. I was given the Cash Merino by Debbie Bliss as a birthday present. And so I'd always wanted to try knitting this pattern because I think it looks really beautiful. So I decided I would knit it out of that yarn. So this is really soft. I can wear it on my bare skin. It is super wash. The neck has stretched out a lot. So I'm actually going to put some elastic in it to bring it back in. I might wash it before I do that in case that also brings it back in a bit. And I do wear this a lot, but unfortunately the bind off on the bottom is a bit too tight. So it does kind of pull it in a bit, which I think looks a bit funny. Um, sorry, I said that a bit funny as well. And I'm not the biggest fan of the bobbles. I really, I think it's a jumper <laughs> that looks beautiful off and a bit funny on me on. And I think that's because... It was meant to have more positive ease than mine does. Mine's a lot more fitted than the pattern is. Um, it doesn't look it, but it is. And so I think the proportions on mine are slightly off. Like it's quite dramatic on the shoulders with the bobbles. And I feel like if the whole thing was a bit bigger and looser around the bottom, it would balance it out. So I do wear it. And I do wear it when I want something on my neck, but I don't want something like itchy. Um, but I have to admit, I haven't really worked out the best way to wear it yet. Um, yeah. I feel like it could be something that would be quite good for work. Um, but I have worn it quite a lot. It's worn okay-ish. I guess how you expect a superwash cash merino to wear. The lace weight definitely does help with that. Um... The yarn was a lot more grey-black, but the mohair sort of toned it down and made it a little bit more grey than black, which is more wearable for me. I'm not like massively into black, definitely more into um, grey. And then my penultimate project to share with you. We're almost there. It's going to be just over an hour. This is another knit that I started the year before and kind of lost my way with. Um, or I started at the beginning of last year and then put it down over the summer and picked it up again uh, when it started to cool down again 
And um, this is my tulip jumper pullover, again by Melody Hoffman. So I'm holding a bit twisted. And I knit mine in two strands of Plutolope and a strand of Mystery Mohair from my Thrifted Cone. This um, really flew by um, to start with uh, because it's on quite big needles, it's quite, quite a big gauge. Mine is quite dense, I think, but I think I got a bit bored of it or it started to hurt my hands or I started to find it a bit tedious. It definitely got warm and got a bit sweaty on my hands because the summer kicked in, so I put it to one side. Um, so I definitely just have to force myself to finish it. I remember being quite fed up with it. Because it was two plates of mohair, sorry, two plates of Plutolope and a cone of mohair, which I didn't wind off and put into a ball, I kept it on the cone. It wasn't very transportable and if you've knit with unspun you know that it's not really something you can throw in a bag and just knit from a bag so i had it in a shoe box and like occasionally for knit night i took the shoe box with me and i think because it wasn't portable um but it was quite a plain knit i kind of yeah it took me a while to get through it but this is a hundred percent the thing i've worn the most <laughs> I did, the only thing that I changed was, because her necklines are quite wide, I did the smallest neckband and I did it folded over and I put some elast rolled elastic in it, which that looks a bit scruffy, but it has kept the neck like a good shape. Uh, I wear this all the time, it goes with so many things, because it's kind of like a creamy colour, I feel like it looks, makes things look a bit nicer, it goes really well with this, it goes really well with that, um, like dressier birds of a feather shawl that I made. Uh, it looks really nice over dresses because of the scalloped bottom. It's a bit cropped, so the end of the um, stock neck body probably hits the top of my waistbands, and then this just hangs, the scalloped edge hangs over slightly. It's got a bit more positive ease, so it fits over um, other jumpers. Uh, it just feels really cozy and snugly, and I wear it multiple times a week it's wearing really well because it's you know icelandic wool i love it i love it this is one of my favorite things i knit last year not my favorite thing to knit so i probably won't make another because i don't need another one it's quite a plain knit i don't feel the urge to make another one whereas i would really like to do a rust colored um felix pullover i think that would be really lovely um, but I do like that this is a raglan and you can't see my tops underneath it through the eyelet detail that you do have on the Felix. I just feel like it's a really good basic, but with a little bit of extra something. So love this one. And it's worn really well. And actually the cuffs. I really like my cuffs on this one. I just did a really simple, like, this. I think this is when I heard about Andrea Mary saying she binds off her sleeves um, just plain, you know, like one by one, no ordinary bind off, but on a bigger needle size. So I think it came out quite neat. And so actually I really like the cuffs on that as well. Small thing, but something that I notice. My last project to share with you. Um, and this I finished a couple of days before Christmas and then managed to block it and wear it on Christmas. This is my, so you've seen this in the last podcast probably, this is my Alaska pullover sweater. And I knit this in Fibre Tails, um, Gotland Blend DK, not this current year's um, clip but last year's in the grey and the black. Uh, this is lighter than my Let Lopi jumpers because it's DK weight. Um, so it's something that I'll probably wear maybe when it gets a bit warmer um, because it's a bit too cold at the moment. As you can see, I've got on, I've got on a vest, long sleeve top and two cardigans currently and I'm comfortable. Um, that's kind of what I need at the moment. Um, what did I say about this? I knit it to pattern, I don't think I modified it at all. 
no it's really lovely you knit it top down so it's mostly plain stock in it so it's quite a good thing if you're going to go traveling because you don't do any color work until you're towards the end so it's plain 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 and then you get towards the end and it's color work so i knit most of the plain bit when we were traveling in america um i used two and a half skeins of the gray and half a skein of the black so i've got about half a skein of each left so i'd like to do something else color work with that yeah so that's everything i knit in 2022 it's a lot i i've had some thoughts about this and i maybe it's excessive maybe i knit too much maybe i need to think about my balance of time i spend knitting and time spent doing other stuff Having said that, I do have quite a long list of things I would like to make this year. I really want to make a conscious effort to use my stash. I've got quite a few projects planned out with yarns I've already got that I want to knit this year. Lots of socks. And so the list was actually quite long. So looking at how much I did manage to knit last year, I'm maybe quite confident I can do a lot of it. I've got a couple of patterns I've been meaning to knit for like two years now so I would like to just do it and get those done because sometimes I put things off because I think they're going to be harder or more laborious than they actually are and sometimes you just need to get started so I am going to do I did ask when I put a poll on Instagram about should I do an everything I knit in 2022 video whether I should do knitting plans for 23 um so I am going to do that maybe I'll do that next weekend um you might get quite a lot of videos from me this month I guess it's the perks of it being cold outside I'm going to be home a lot more now I know that because I am quite a slow knitter so I am going to say I knit a lot I knit before going to work I knit during um like easy going work meetings when it's just the team um and it's just my brain that they need and they don't need my hands um I knit when we go to the pub, I knit when I watch TV, I knit when I'm hanging out with friends, some friends, because some friends find it really annoying. Um, but like, you know, I have friends that don't mind me knitting around them. I knit when I see my mum, I knit when I'm on the train, uh, I knit on the motorway on long journeys. So I do have a lot of time for knitting. I don't have children. I don't have a dog. I want a dog, but I don't have a dog. Um, I have quite a lot of I don't really have any responsibilities other than my, my work and like normal life responsibilities. So I do knit a lot. I don't think that it's going to be like that for the whole of my life. I feel like I'm in a period of time now where I have time as a luxury, like time as a luxury I do have access to. Um, I also don't spend as much time cleaning and tidying the house as I should. <laughs> I'd rather knit. Um, there's a lot of things where I should do more of, like being outside and exercising. Uh, I don't, I knit. <laughs> I'm terrible. I don't have to commute to work that much, sometimes not at all. My commute, when I do do it, uh, is only 15 minutes on my bike. I used to walk and it used to take me over an hour sometimes because it's all uphill. But getting an electric bike really cut that down. Plus now since Covid we do work from home quite a lot. So that gives me quite a lot of time in the morning that I would normally spend getting ready and going to work. I knit instead. So I do have a lot of hours available to me for knitting. And I recognise that. Not everybody has that luxury. But I also recognise I'm probably not going to have that luxury for the whole of my life. That this is this moment in time. And I am making the most of it. So though I've said, I think the amount I've done is excessive. I also feel like I want to make the most of it whilst I can. Because maybe things won't always be like this. Who knows what life will bring. So maybe that's quite deep and philosophical. But I do have quite ambitious knitting plans for this year. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. And I will share those in my next video. If you have any questions about any of the projects I've knit this year. Do feel free to reach out and ask. My voice is now going. Because I've been talking straight for an hour and ten minutes. So I'm going to go and say goodbye. The sun is now coming out. <laughs> typical so I could say I'm going to go out for a walk in the sun but I'm going to be honest I'm not I'm going to make another cup of tea I'm going to rest for 10 minutes and then I am actually going to do some cleaning I hate cleaning but it needs to happen so that's what I'm going to go do 
and then I will do some more knitting. So happy new year everybody. I think I might have said that in a video that I re released recently because I think I did one on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve but happy new year anyway. We're like halfway through the month now. Um, I'm going to aim to get this up soon and aim next weekend to do my knitting plans. So I hope you're having a cosy start to the year wherever you are. Um, not too cosy if you're somewhere hot. <laughs> uh but i hope you're getting plenty of gorgeous knitting in and i will speak to you very very soon <laughs>